What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome back to my best skill sets guide series. It's actually been a while since I've said that, so for those of you who are new, in every episode of this series, I go over 10 units and I give you guys their best skill entrance options and their best skill sets. I've actually made 5 episodes so far in this series already and I have pretty much covered 50 units before and in those videos I've covered some of the most popular units. So if you haven't already seen that then be sure to check it out. And I also want to thank the creator of this amazing tool for planning skill inheritance and Kagero chart for their awesome combat simulator. Their links are going to be in the description down below. So let's begin with Tana, a recently added top tier unit in the game. And uh, I'll begin with her budget set. So if you have got a minus attack or a minus speed Tana, you can definitely run this set. You want to run reposition because it's especially very good on flying units because you can put your allies across mountains, bridges and lava and her best special is draconic aura even if you've got a minus attack Tana if you run Firu with that so you can run this but if you do not have Camilla or a female Corrin to fodder then I guess you can also stick to her default moonbow. Now for Slotty, we're going to be running Fury to patch up whatever bad IVs your Tana has like minus attack or minus speed. And for Slot B, you can run Renewal, but you can also run Desperation. Do not run Desperation if you have got a minus speed Tana, but in case you do want to run Desperation, then replace Fury with Darting Blow so that Tana can outspeed a lot more units. And with this set, you definitely want to run Speed plus 1 Sacred Seal. If you run Renewal, then Tana can also function in the enemy phase, but if you run Darting Blow and Desperation set, then she can do a lot of work in the player phase, so it's up to you. The best IVs for this particular set is plus speed minus resistance. However, like I said, this set is pretty versatile, so any kind of Tana can be run with this set. And there's actually another set if you want to capitalize on the effect of Vidofnir. I know a lot of people do like to run sets on their units around their legendary weapon. So Vidofnir is pretty busted in enemy phase, making a fast flyer like Tana quite bulky by giving her plus 7 defense if she's up against a sword, axe or lance unit. And uh, with this set you want to run reposition and her default moonbow. And for Slotty you've got two options. You can either run fortress defense and uh, fortress defense is easier to get than close defense because it's available on two units. But you can also run close defense but close defense is only going to be active in the enemy phase just like Vidofner. And close defense and Vidofner bonus do stack up because both of these bonuses are spur bonuses which means that they're only active in the combat so close defense can be run if you do not want her to lose any kind of attack like from fortress defense but it's up to the availability of your units and in the enemy phase she reaches 37 defense with fortress defense and with close defense she reaches 38 defense in the enemy phase which is really insane for a unit like this so for slot b you've got a couple of options Swordbreaker is a pretty good option because she's not able to double stuff like olivia erica and fury ryoma so with the help of Swordbreaker, she's going to be able to kill them but you can also run quick repost now i know a lot of people will say that uh, why run quick repost on a unit this fast well the thing is that she cannot really double lance units like sharina azura walter and many more units like that with neutral speed ivs so with the help of quick repost you'll be able to kill a lot more units in the enemy phase compared to sword breaker and uh, you can also run renewal to maintain her longevity if you want to this is pretty useful in stuff like chain challenges and tempest trial and for a lot of these sets, you should use Guidance as her slotsy skill, unless you're running her on a Flyer Emblem team, because Guidance is a pretty busted skill, as it gives free Wings of Mercy to armored and infantry units. It's just a great default skill for her, so definitely run Guidance. And for her Sacred Seal, you want to run HP plus 3 so that she can become a bit more bulky. And the best IVs for this set is plus attack minus resistance however a plus defense tana can also work really well with this set because she's able to reach more than 40 defense if she is plus defense so that could be pretty awesome so this was her second set these two sets don't really make her a top tier unit but the sets which i'm about to reveal definitely make her one of the best lance units in the game so with this set you want to run fire sweep lance plus and with this weapon she becomes the best poking unit in the entire game and she does a better job than cordelia at this by a slight margin due to the fact that Tana has got a higher speed compared to Cardelia and once again you want to run reposition and her best special is Draconic Aura so you definitely want to run that. It gives her consistent points of 16 damage with life and death and life and death is the premium option for slot A but if you cannot afford life and death 
then you can also run Darting Blow over this, and you can even run Life and Death 2 from a 4 star Hana if you do not have the version 3 of the skill. So any of these two skills can be run, and for Slot B, you definitely want to run Hit and Run. You don't want to run Drag Back because Drag Back actually pulls back the enemy as well, and Hit and Run does not do that, and only Tana moves one space back making it so that you can use her guidance skill and teleport an ally right in front of Tana to finish off the enemy who she just weakened with fire sweep lance or just teleport an ally to protect her from the enemy's attacks in the enemy face. So guidance is once again very good option here. For her sacred seal you want to run speed plus one as you want to have as much speed as possible on a fire sweep weapon user so that you can ensure double attacks and the best IVs for this set is plus speed minus resistance. However, a plus attack Tana also does really well with this set. And this is her matchup chart with the Fire Sweep Lance set. And she has got 117 wins and 47 draws. That is pretty good. Obviously, we're not gonna be facing vanilla units in the arena, so that's why we're gonna override. Uh, Fury for slot A of every enemy because Fury is a really popular skill in arena and uh, even if all of the enemies have got Fury skill, she gets 96 wins and 68 draws which is honestly really good. So let's move on to her next set and she can also run a Brave Lance set and quad attack many units and this is a pretty good set as well just like Fire Sweep Lance set and uh, you definitely want to run Brave Lance from uh, Abel, Cordelia, Donald, or Hinoka, and you want to run Ardent Sacrifice because one Ardent Sacrifice will put her in the Desperation range, so that is pretty nice. And unless you've got a plus attack Tana, you can run Luna, and if you've got a plus attack Tana, then I guess you can run um, Draconic Aura. So for Slot A, once again, we're going to be going with Life and Death, and uh, for Slot B, we're going to be going with Desperation. So this will allow her to quad attack many units and if you cannot run life and death 3 then just run life and death 2 from a 4 star Hana and you really need to boost both her attack and speed so that's why you should go with life and death so you can go with that and uh, once again we can have guidance unless you're using her on a flyer emblem team. If you are using her on a flyer emblem team then her guidance is completely useless. So you could run something like a Fortify Flyers or Hone Flyers. And with the set, you want to run Attack plus 1 Sacred Seal because many times Tana does not even need to quad attack enemies to kill them and she can just kill them with two heads. So that's why the best IVs for this set is plus attack, minus resistance, and even a plus B Tana will do pretty well with this set. And this is our matchup chart with this set. 121 wins, 30 losses, 13 draws. If all of the enemies are running Fury, and if we remove that, it becomes 128 wins. So these were all of the sets which Tana can run. And now let's move on to Amelia, another unit from the Sacred Stones banner. And she's definitely an incredible unit. You want to run Swap on her as a resist skill because ever since Armor March has been released, I don't really think armored units have to run Pivot to get around. Swap is a much better assist skill and Bonfire should be run on her. But if you have got a minus attack Amelia, then run Igneous and pair that up with Quicken Pulse. At least that's what I did for my minus attack Amelia. With Igneous, she can kill some red units like I remember killing a lot of Ikes and Rayomas with my minus attack Amelia. So she gets excellent amount of bonus damage with Igneous, but if you do not have a minus attack Amelia, then you can just go with Bonfire. Fury is a great option for a balanced unit like her, and it does help her with her bulk and offenses. Definitely her best slot A option if you cannot run Distant Counter. Deathblow can also be run on her, but it doesn't really provide her speed like Fury. And for slot B, I see a lot of people running Desperation on her, which is a complete waste of skill because you run Desperation on frail units who cannot take hits, and that that's why they need to attack consecutively, but Amelia is anything but frail, so run Renewal on her to maintain her longevity, and you can even run Vantage, but on stuff like Chain Challenges and Tempest Trials, Amelia will get worn down without Renewal, so that's why you can run Renewal, it's a really good skill for her, and if you have got a minus speed Amelia, you could also run Quick Repost. But still, Renewal is fine for a Minus Speed Amelia. Minus Attack Amelia is not as bad as Minus Speed Amelia, so Minus Speed is definitely the worst IV for Amelia. And you can run Quick and Pulse if you've got Igneous as your special, but otherwise you can run Speed plus 1 Sacred Seal. And the best IVs for this set is plus Speed minus Resistance. You can also run a Distant Counter set on her with Swap and Bonfire. 
and uh, this encounter from Hector of course and for Sloppy you definitely want to run quick repost because mages in this metagame are way faster than Amelia and can easily reach more than 40 speed not to mention some units like Merge Bright, Cordelia with life and death can also tank a hit from Amelia so quick repost ensures that you can get more one round KOs. If you specifically want your team to be Nino proof, then I guess you can even run Green Tomb Breaker to prevent Desperation Nino from killing your Amelia. And you need to run Armor March on all of these sets. And for her Sacred Seal, you want to run Attack plus one. And the best IVs for this set is plus attack minus HP. She can also run another set, but it is really expensive because you replace her Slaying Axe plus and you run Brave Axe so that she can quad attack many units with it. So you want to run Swap and Bonfire as per usual and uh, for Slotty instead of running Life and Death, you want to run Fury. Now Life and Death is not really that good of an option on a unit like her who has got this good bulk and it kind of ruins her bulk to be honest so that's why Fury is a better option in my opinion and for Slot B you can run Axe Breaker and uh, with Axe Breaker you can one round kill a bunch of Axe units like Hector, Minerva, opposing Emelia's Legion and stuff like that which are super common in the arena and you can also run Renewal but uh, Axe Breaker is better in my opinion because you get to make Amelia into a pretty nice Axe check. So for her Sacred Seal you want to run Speed plus 1 and the best IVs with this set is plus Speed minus Resistance and with plus Speed IV and Hone Armor buff she can quad attack many units and do not forget to pair her up with a Hone Armor ally so that she can quad attack many units and become strong overall. So now let's take a look at the third unit for this video. Sonia can be a great magic chick and take care of the ever popular Reinhardt and you can run reposition on her as well as drawback to provide a lot of utility to your team and uh, you definitely want to run her default Moonbow because uh, Moonbow is the best special with Voda weapons due to its lower cooldown and for Slotty you've got two options. You can either run Fury or you could run Distant Defense. Now obviously, uh, Distant Defense is a very expensive option from a 5-star Celica, but if you've got an extra Celica, then you can run this and make her into an even more reliable magic check. But if you cannot, then you can just go with Fury. And for Slot B, you definitely want to run Green Tome Breaker so that you can check green mages like Nino, Julia, Summer Elise, and stuff like that. And without the skill, she will not be able to check other green mages, and it's a really good option on her due to her high risk and stat and leave her resistance ploy as it is because it is a fantastic skill on her and uh, for her sacred seal you want to run HP plus 3 sacred seal or attack ploy. With attack ploy she can actually debuff uh, 2 stats with the help of resistance ploy so that can be pretty amazing and any IVs can work with this set. You can even run this set on a minus attack, minus speed or a minus resistance Sonia. However the best IVs for this set is plus speed minus defense. Now if you happen to have a plus speed Sonia and if you do not want to make her a magic check then you can even run desperation on her with fury or swift sparrow. It's up to you. Fury is a cheap option but swift sparrow can be run if you've got an extra Katarina and just do not run a life and death on her because it will completely ruin her resistance stat and at a time when you need her to take a magical hit it will be troublesome for you especially if you're up against someone like Quick and Pulse Moonbow Reinhardt. So these were her best skill set. And now we're going to be taking a look at a free to play unit Clyde. The third Tempest Trial was much more easier than the other two ones. So I do think a lot of people have him. And for this set you can run his default Silver Lance. But if you want and if you have got access to extra Matilda. Then you can even give him Rider's Bane. And if you do that then it is going to be quite helpful to Clive as he will be able to one round KO a lot of horse units in the player phase. And if you cannot do that and if you do not want to feed him his own wife then I guess Silver Lance is fine. And uh, you want to run Reposition on him and Moonbow. Moonbow is pretty good on quick repose builds and for Slotty you can go with attack plus 3. Now you can also run Fury but Fury might knock him out of the quick repose range so that's why I prefer running attack plus 3 with quick repose and attack plus 3 is a much cheaper option as well SP wise and both unit wise because uh, Shershi and Garden are much easier to get and Fury is only available on Hinata and there are just so many skill sets that require Fury so that's why attack plus 3 can be run on him and for slots you can run something like threaten defense so that uh, he can maximize his damage output but if you've got extra Walter or extra Luke you can also run panic ploy 
and uh, he's got really good HP, so he can make great use of Panic Ply skill. And uh, for his Secret Seal, you want to run Attack plus 1 with this set, and if you're running Panic Ploy, then go with HP plus 3 Secret Seal. So this was his default and budget set, and he can also run a Brave Lance set. So you can run Brave Lance, and for slot A, you want to go with Death Blow, and uh, for slot B, you can either run his default Hit and Run, or Lance Breaker. And for slot C, you of course want to have Threatened Defense, and for his special, you can go with Bonfire, or Igneous with Quick and Pulse, it's up to you, but Bonfire is really good as it gives him 16 points of additional damage. So those are his skill sets, and he can pretty much run the same skill sets as Burkut, but unlike Burkut, he's got very low resistance, so he cannot really make use of this encounter, at least not to that extent. And now let's move on to the next unit, and now we're gonna be taking a look at Ennis. His default kit is already so good that all you need to do is run reposition and any kind of slotsy skill like attack ploy, and you'll be good to go. Attack ploy in particular is a fantastic skill for him, making him even more bulky against magical nukers. And with this set, you can run any kind of Ennis, even a minus speed or minus resistance one. However, if you have got a minus attack Ennis, then I would recommend you to not run Fortress Resistance and instead run Fury. So Fury will patch up the bad IV for attack and uh, if you can, then you can also run distant defense from a Celica if you've got a couple of extra Celicas and this way, Ennis will maintain his attack and also get insane amounts of resistance in the enemy face. If you plan to run him as a magic check, then definitely be sure to run HP plus 3 Sacred Seal because his HP isn't really that high and HP plus 3 Sacred Seal will make him more bulky to take on the magical heads. And the best IV spread for this set is plus speed, minus defense. However, a minus resistance in us can also work really well with this set. Now, if you don't find much merit of using Council Affinity for slot B, and if you already have uh, strong physical units on your team to take care of Raven Tome users, then you can run Guard instead, and that is to stop Cook and Pulse Moonbow Reinhardt from killing you. And with Guard, Ennis is able to check any kind of Reinhardt, and it's not even that you need to run Guard 3, you can even run Guard 2 from a 4-star Leon or Titania and you'll be fine. And I'll show you guys a calc to explain much better. So here we have got that same Ennis with uh, Iceberg, Fortress Resistance, Guard and HP plus 3 Sacred Seal. And here we have got a Reinhardt with plus attack IV, Moonbow, Death Blow and Quick on Pulse and he is plus 10 merged as you can see. Ennis is able to take hit from this insane Reinhardt and then retaliate and kill him. Now this will be a problem if that uh, Reinhardt has got a Hone Cavalry bonus and then he'll be able to kill Ennis. But if this is the case then all you need to do is make a T-shaped formation with your allies and have three adjacent allies near Ennis and then Ennis can even take on a Horse Emblem plus 10 merge death blow plus attack Reinhardt as you can see and then kill him. The only catch is that a minus resistance Ennis will not be able to do any of this cool stuff. So that's why you need to have neutral Ennis or any Ennis which is not uh, minus HP or minus resistance. So he can be a very solid Reinhardt check with the help of guard and this skill is pretty useful. Now finally if you do not want to run him as a magic check and you just want to run him as an offensive archer then you can run fury and desperation and he can be a pretty good offensive archer. If you miss getting bright Cardelia, then you can run brave bow Ennis as a replacement for her but in few days Lin is gonna be coming in the choose your legends event and Lin is a definitely better archer than Ennis because of her higher base speed and the fact that she is on a horse. So Ennis soon is going to be becoming the third best archer instead of the second one. So you can run Brave Bow and uh, for his assist skill you want to run Ardent Sacrifice so that you can reach Desperation range in one Ardent Sacrifice. And you want to run Luna because we're going to be running Life and Death on him. So you cannot really use Iceberg and for his slot B you can run Desperation. With Desperation and Life and Death he's going to be able to quad attack many units. He's actually pretty fast. He only has one speed less than uh, Lin and uh, Bright Cordelia. And you want Want to run threatened defense on him so that he can get more one round KOs and this is actually his best set even though he can perform really well as a magic check and that's the power of brave bow. So with this set you want to run speed plus one sacred seal so that he can quad attack units who have got base 30 speed and having plus attack or plus speed IV is really good with this set but the best IV spread for this set is plus speed minus defense and uh, he can do a lot of destruction with this set. 
So these were his sets. Now let's move on to the next unit, who's going to be Summer Elise. Summer Elise is actually quite similar to Nino, and she's a complete glass cannon. So try to run Grand Blade on her, and if you cannot run Grand Blade Plus on her, then just run Grand Blade from a three-star Nino because the difference is pretty marginal. So have this on her, and then for her assist skill, go with Ardent Sacrifice because one Ardent Sacrifice will put her in the desperation range without her indulging in any kind of combat, which is pretty good for a unit this frail. And for her special, you want to run Moonbow or Glimmer. Glimmer is actually really good for Tempest Trials and Chain Challenges because there, units have got inflated HP, so Glimmer can be really useful there. But if you plan to use Elise only in Arena, then run Moonbow. And for Slot A, you can run Life and Death 3. You can even run Life and Death 2 from a 4 star Hana. But if you do not have any sort of Life and Death fodder, then you can even run Death Blow on her. And for Slot B, you want to run Desperation. For Slot C, you can run any skill because Slot C is a very flexible skill slot. And you want to run attack plus one sacred seal with this set. And plus attack minus defense is the best IV spread for this set. There's actually another set which only a plus wrist and Sino can specifically run. And you can make her into a magic check. So you want to run drawback or reposition. And you want to run iceberg as her special. And fury and green tome breaker. Pretty much the same thing as uh, Sonia. But the only difference between her and Sonia is that uh, Elise needs to be plus resistance IV specifically to function as a magic check, unlike Sonia. And you can run any skill for slot C, um, like threaten resistance, and you definitely want to run attack ply sacred seal with this set. It will definitely help you take magical hits, or you could even run HP plus 3 sacred seal because her HP isn't really that high. And I'll show you guys how good of a magic check Elise can become with plus resistance IV. So here we have got that same Elise with plus resistance, Fury, Green Tome Breaker, and HP plus 3 Secret Seal. And uh, here we have got a Reinhardt who's plus attack with the Death Blow, Quick and Pulse, and Moonbow who is plus 10 merge. So as you can see, she can even take on this kind of Reinhardt and even take a hit from a Quick and Pulse Moonbow Reinhardt and then kill him. So she can be a pretty good magic check and a very reliable Reinhardt counter if you have got a plus resistance IV at least. And any Bane can work with this set. You just need to have plus resistance. Even minus HP works, but if you have got minus HP, then you definitely want to run HP plus 3 Sacred Seal. So that is the set for Summer Elise. And now let's move on to the seventh unit for this video. And that unit is going to be Est. Est has got the same base attack as Cordelia, however, she's got much lower speed than Cordelia, so she's not able to quad attack units like her. And uh, you definitely want to run Brave Lance set with her because of her high attack. And you want to run Reposition because like I said, it is really good on flying units. And you want to run Iceberg because of her high resistance. And with this, she's able to get 16 points of additional damage whenever she procs Iceberg. And for Slot A, you want to run Death Blow as her skill. And uh, for Slot B, you want to run Hit and Run or Drag Back. I'd say that Drag Back is much better because if she cannot really kill an enemy, then she can bring that enemy close to your team and then one of your allies can finish off that enemy. And for Slot C, you want to run <clears throat> Threaten Defense. I know there are a lot of defense ploy memes on Est, but uh, you don't really need defense ploy to kill ranged units at all because most of them are really frail except for Leon and Bowie. And Threaten Defense works just as fine for killing melee units after the debuff. For her Secret Seal, you want to run Attack plus 1 so that you can maximize her damage output. And the best IVs for this skill set is plus attack and minus HP. Due to her high resistance, she can also be a magic check. And uh, for this set, you want to run Burkut's Lance Plus because she will get plus for resistance in the enemy phase and this will make her much more bulky for taking on the magical hits. And uh, you want to run Reposition and Iceberg like the previous set. And for Slot A, you want to run Distant Counter and this way, she'll be able to check a lot of mages, especially Celica, Tharja and stuff like that. And for Slot B, you want to run Quick Repose to ensure that uh, she kills any kind of mage that she baits. And for Slot C, you want to run Attack Ploy so that she can take hits much better. And then you want to run HP plus 3 Sacred Seal. But if you cannot run Attack Ploy, then you can just go with Threaten Defense and run Attack Ploy Sacred Seal. Both are valid options. And if you're running her on a Flyer Emblem team, then you can run something like Hone Flyers or Fortify Flyers. The best IVs for this set is plus HP minus defense because Est actually gets a super boon on HP at 5 star rarity meaning that she can get 
plus 4 bonus to HP instead of the usual plus 3 bonus. And this is a pretty niche set and she can do quite a lot of work in the enemy phase. If you want, you can even run Rider's Bane on her and she can actually want to KO a lot of horse units in the player phase. But if you run this over Burkut's Lance, then she's not going to be that bulky in the player phase because Burkut's Lance does give her plus 4 resistance. So these were her skill and intense options. Now let's move on to the next unit and now we're going to be taking a look at Hannah. Hannah is pretty underrated, she's much more than just a life and death fodder due to her amazing offensive stats of 35 and 36 and she can quad attack many units if she can run Brave Sword Plus. So for her assist skill you want to give her Ardent Sacrifice so that she reaches desperation range in one Ardent Sacrifice and for her special you want to give her Luna. However, if you've got a plus attack Hannah, then you can even run Draconic Aura and Draconic Aura is a much consistent special than Luna. And you don't really want to change her slot A skill because it's actually one of the best in the game. And you want to run Desperation for her slot B so that she can hit enemies 4 times consecutively when she's in the Desperation range. Threaten defense is really good as you get to hit much hard and uh, you can take out many units with just 2 hits after this debuff. And uh, you want to run Attack plus 1 Sacred Seal on her and the best IVs for this set is plus attack minus resistance. Now I know a lot of people might think of running plus speed so that she can quad attack more units but honestly Hannah is just so strong with plus attack IV that she can kill a lot of units with just two hits and doesn't even need to quad attack many times. So that's why I think plus attack is better on her than plus speed and this is our matchup chart with this set. As you can see it is pretty good and if we run fury on all of the enemies then it's still gonna be really good as you can see. So Brave Sword Hannah is actually a very good unit and uh, you can also run a Voda Plus set with uh, Moonbow. And this is also a really good set but the best IVs for this skill set is Plus Speed minus Resistance. Plus Speed allows her to win more matchups with Voda Plus and it is highly recommended to run Quick Unpulse to make Moonbow into a one turn cooldown special. But if you cannot run Quick Unpulse then run Speed Plus 1 and this is her matchup chart with Wodao Plus and uh, she's got 103 wins with Speed Plus 1 Sacred Seal but if you give her Quick Unpulse and make Moonbow a one turn cooldown special then she becomes a monster with this and if we run Fury on each and every enemy then still her matchup chart is really good with 100 wins. So these are her best skill sets. And now let's move on to the next unit who's gonna be Gaius. Gaius is a really good dagger user due to his high speed but he cannot really serve as a magic check like Kagero due to his very low resistance but he can definitely double a lot more units than her due to having higher base speed. So you definitely wanna run poison dagger plus and life and death and uh, for his assist skill you want to run reciprocal aid but it is recommended to run a minus HP Gaius so that you can run Ardent Sacrifice to get him into the desperation range in one Ardent Sacrifice. And for especially you want to run Luna or Moonbow because he does not really fit into criteria of other specials. And for slot B desperation is his best option because he does not have high enough attack like Kagero to fully utilize Vantage. So that's why Desperation is really good on him because he can avoid getting hit by distant counter units. And the best IVs for this set is plus speed minus HP and minus HP ensures that you can put Gaius into Desperation range with one Ardent Sacrifice and Threatened Defense wins you more matchups than Threatened Speed so you can run that and uh, it is also recommended to run Attack plus one Sacred Seal on him. So this was the skill set for Gaius and Gaius can be a really good dagger user. Actually the third best dagger user in the game after Kagero and Summer Frederick. And now let's move on to the last unit for this video and that unit is gonna be Frederick. So Frederick is basically a horse version of Shershi because he can hit really hard with Brave Axe Plus. So you definitely want to run that on him and for his assist skill you want to run reposition and you can replace his default Luna with Bonfire so that he gets consistent 18 points of additional damage whenever he triggers that and for slot A you want to run death blow and for slot B you can run his default Wings of Mercy or you can even give him something like hit and run or drag back it's up to you and for slot C you can run anything but threatened defense is recommended so that he can one round KO more units and you should run attack plus one sacred seal and the best IVs for this set is plus attack minus resistance so that he can reach 52 attack upon initiating an attack in the player phase and hit extremely hard. So this is gonna conclude my part 6 of my best skill sets guide series. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and if you did please be sure to leave a like 
And with that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.